Okay, once again, who's ready for some Zelda? I'm going to switch it over to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, any percent. All right. Welcome everyone to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, any percent, no amiibo. Uh, first things first, uh, we're not going to start the timer on new game. We start the timer when we gain control of Link. So I'll call the timer whenever. So first things first, uh, hi, I'm Wu Hai Tsong. Um, I've been running Any% percent for two years, and this is my couch. Please introduce yourselves. My name is Zant. I run a bunch of other categories that are not Any%. Percent. Uh, my name is Mr. Pop one I also run this game. I'm Liam Cube, and I also run Any% percent currently. All right, so here at the beginning of Breath of the Wild, we, um, you're actually going to see immediately how this game has really changed over the past year or so. Um, Any% percent was featured at GDQ in the past uh, by Orchestra, but 2018 was an absolutely ridiculous year for this game. Discovery after discovery, reroute after reroute, and finally this game has gotten to where it is today. So um, after timing starts here, there's going to be one of the most crazy sequence breaks that we have in this game so far. And we're just going to let Song go through with this, and then we'll talk about it a little bit later. But um, this will be Shrine of Resurrection skip. You will hear Zelda talk here briefly, and this is also where you will notice that this game is actually played in French, which just happens to be the fastest language for any percent specifically. Mm -hmm. So don't get thrown off by that. But yeah, going to be sitting through a little bit of a cutscene, and then Song is going to go yeah. at the Shrine of Resurrection skip. OK, so get ready. Three, two, one, go. go. Yeah, the reason that that uh, intro cutscene there wasn't included in timing anymore is that it's actually pretty inconsistent um, within a few seconds of each other. Yeah, so as you can see now, uh, the game is in French. Uh, French is the fastest language, at least for any percent. And the reason for that is that voice acting is just faster in French. So because of that, you'll save a couple seconds in any percent, and that varies based on what category you're in. So Song just picked up Sheikah Slate here, and we just started the game. He's about to gain control. But he's going to do something here known as a scope clip. And yeah. I need to look at some visual cues in the map. Almost. Got to climb again. Basically just trying to look at a specific angle here on the mini map as he's trying to clip through. Close. Almost. This angle here is pretty precise. Yes, this is definitely one of those tricks that caused a lot of resets. Thankfully, it is here at the beginning of the run. But, mm. almost. Can we get some encouragement for him? <laughs> Come on, Song, you got this, dude. Yeah. Ooh, that's close. There, there we is. go. Let's go. <laughs> and just like that, we're already out of bounds. He's going to climb up here onto the height map, and he's going to clip back in by uncrouching. But yes, that is trying to resurrection skip, but that's going to skip a decent bit of cutscene. There's two individual cutscenes. And a neat little side effect, in addition to skipping some cutscenes, is that this actually locks the time of day in the game to 5.15 AM. Um, so for categories that um, have to uh, actually you know, not get Shrine of Resurrection skip, you usually have to deal with things like lightning, time of day changes uh, that cause temperature oh, and changes, rain, rain, rain. We a hate whole bunch rain. of things. We hate mm. rain. But Rain this just over. completely lets you bypass all of that. It's going to be sunny the whole run. So that's very nice. Yeah, Song is also about to head up into a pretty cold area, which is why he's picking up some backup food here. So since we didn't pick up any armor, Link is obviously going to be taking cold damage. And there's a specific Bokoblin camp that we are going to pass to get some extra items. And yeah, he needs to be careful to not get hit there. If he does, he has this backup food. If he doesn't get hit, he can actually get through there without eating. Yeah, so like we see here, we have two of the three essential items that we'll be needing on Plateau. Um, our axe, our shield, and eventually here our bow. And we'll be using that for about half the run. So if you haven't noticed already, uh, Song is also using a little bit of a movement exploit known as whistle sprinting um, that allows you to sprint infinitely while um, not consuming stamina. And actually, it restores your stamina as you're doing that. So um, even though it isn't full sprint speed, uh, cycling that back and forth with full sprinting is the most optimal basic movement in this game. 
Um, you can also do something called throw sprinting, um, which you know basically has the same purpose, but um, you use a weapon throw instead of uh, whistling. And the advantage of that is that enemies won't hear you. Yeah, we see that in the in the castle section a lot later, as you need to be careful to not get uh, spotted by enemies. But now, as you may or may not have noticed, uh, if you compare this one to your casual playthrough, Song has currently not yet obtained the Great Plateau Tower. And he's actually straight up heading to the first shrine in the game, the Stasis Shrine, which is in this weird dormant state. But uh, pretty much the next thing that's going to come up is uh, one of the two giant discoveries that took place last year called Sheet Clipping. Let's see what he does here. Very close. And there nice. we go. Yes. Nice. We're in. And for some reason, this elevator is actually active. The shrine is basically dormant, but the elevator is active, so he's able to access the shrine. So um, this whole setup to skip the tower, this was originally theorized quite a while back, but uh, the discovery of shield clipping actually allowed us to be able to do that. And uh, I guess we can do a little bit of rundown of shield clipping. Um, it's based around a mechanic called skew. So skew is placed when you actually bonk your shield onto a sloped surface that causes Link to put it away immediately. Um, if you shield surf after this, you'll notice he'll pop to the side for two frames um, after unequipping the shield. And basically, if you are shield surfing into a wall that's perpendicular to the direction of your skew, you can just straight up clip through. Yeah. It's honestly very complicated once you first talk about it, but when you actually do it, as soon as you get it once, it's actually fairly easy. Yeah, it's it is a very really understandable trick. It really yeah. is. And there's a whole bunch of different methods of, uh, you know, other methods of clipping as well. Um, extended shield clipping is something else that you can use with skew as well. Yeah, here uh, he's going to be doing a shield jump here in a second. You'll be able to see that kind of flick back a little bit um, that we were just explaining called skew. So pay attention here, you'll see it. There yep. we go. Little, little flick to the side, and that was actually clipping through the wall. But they're also skipping that boulder puzzle, something that we didn't even yeah. talk about. Yep. Usually the game obviously intends you to knock that boulder away with the stasis module, which we'll see soon as one of our most useful modules, actually, in the run. So that is our first of the four spirit orbs on the Great Plateau. Essentially, in order to get them gain the paraglider, we have to uh, complete all four of the shrines that give us each of the runes that we use in the game. So something of note here as well, um, Song's going to wait to skip this cutscene. Um, if you don't do that and you skip it too early, it'll actually cause the game to preload a second time, and it'll end up wasting about seven seconds. So combined with the fact that you're waiting an extra two seconds, it usually saves about five seconds per shrine. And since Song already knows what selection he is going to make in the text, I think this is time for one donation right now as he scrolls through here. Yep. <laughs> this will be a good time for a donation. You got it. We have a $200 donation from Mousy that says, staying up late to watch The Legend of Zelda runs, but donating now just in case I fall asleep. Thank you for all you do, and good luck on your runs. But yeah, now we will see the power of the stasis rune. Stasis is a ridiculously powerful rune. It has so many uses in this game, and as you've probably seen with Breath of Wild runs before, you can do crazy things like he's about to do here with this boulder. However, there's something coming up here in a second that <laughs> is just absolutely mind-blowing, and it truly is. It's just an omen to what Breath of the Wild has become nowadays. Very nice. So, nice. Really good angle there, too. Yeah. Let's let Song do this, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, this is precise. Yeah, it's going to be a really hard trick. I'm going to shoot an arrow here to lure the Bokovlin out. Set Link's jumping angle. Mm. Koblen mm. noticed him here. Oh, no. 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 Oh, very close. Yeah. You get the idea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till you see the real thing. <laughs> yeah, like we were saying, this trick is incredibly precise. Everything matters. And this one in particular, I think sometimes you really don't know what you did wrong. The Bokoblin just sometimes mm. notices you. This is kind of sadly the story for some of the tricks in the game, but let's see. This looks, looks good. good. This looks good. There we go. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> and we are surfing in the air. The game can't even catch up, by the way. And finish it off with a fall damage cancel right there. <laughs> so actually swapping the weapon while you're in the throwing animation allows you to cancel any fall damage. It's very useful on the Great Plateau. But you guys are probably wondering what that trick was, right? <laughs> so. 
that was known as a bullet time bounce. Essentially what happens is if you're in a shield surfing state, when you land on an enemy, um, after pulling the bow out, Link will actually be in this slow-mo effect. And if you land on an enemy during that time, then exit bullet time, his speed will get multiplied because the game miscalculates the interaction that happens between the enemy and your shield. So because of that, you get literally a 20 times speed boost when exiting bullet time. And that just absolutely sends you flying across the map. <laughs> And yeah. in that time, by the way, Song just clipped through two walls. Like, that's yeah. just how this game is nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Like, you were explaining a trick, and he's already clipped through two additional walls, now getting the Cryonis rune. Yeah. So, yeah, like we were talking before with, the, uh, with Stasis, we have to clip into all the shrines on the Great Plateau in order to skip the tower. So, um, the Cryonis rune is, you know, it's not the most useful rune. Basically, for the purposes of any percent, it's going to be a strat that we do here in the shrine and then just kind of forget about for the time being. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but um, this, this track he's going to do here in a little bit called a Kranus Jump, it's a very basic technique, but it has a lot of applications. It lets you uh, climb some pretty high walls, as well as chaining it together with things like bombs to do something in other shrines as well. Oof, oh, almost. That's, yeah, that does happen sometimes. <laughs> but luckily, you can just climb right up over here. This Guardian doesn't want, not like us. This today. Guardian is definitely mean. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so coming up here in a second, we're actually going to have the second bullet time bounce of the run. And actually, Song's going to be going for something a little bit crazy with this one. Um, this next bullet time bounce is going to go all the way to the Magnesis Shrine, hopefully. Um, but if he manipulates reloading correctly and we get lucky, uh, he will actually be able to make it so we cannot clip into the Magnesis Shrine by deloading the Shrine. Yep. So if you get to a Shrine um, before it's able to properly load in, it'll be loaded in at the lower level of detail that doesn't have a door. So you can just walk in, even if it's a dormant Shrine. But first of all, we got to focus on this B2B. Arguably, I would, I would say the second hardest B2B in any percent. I could agree. Mm -hmm. uh, it's re really, really hard to get this optimal angle. Let's see if Song can do it. This looks pretty that good. That looks good. Very good. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So he's a little bit low here. I think he's going to end up falling a bit early. Mm -hmm. Four damage cancel. And Very landed. good. OK, cool. Maybe able to see an yeah, unloaded shrine a little bit. Yep. The shrine is unloaded. It might load. It would be amazing if it didn't load. It would be absolutely amazing if it didn't uh, load. Still unloaded. Oh. Still unloaded. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it in. He's just going to have to clip in like we've done with the other shrines. But yeah, that's a very nice little time save you can get if you can manage to unload the shrine. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't quite understand how it works. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of randomness to uh, it. Very but quick clip. Yeah, very that was really nice. I think as Song is about to get the Magnesis this one, this would be another time for a donation or two, maybe, depending on how long they are. I can work with that. Uh, we have a $314 donation from Dice Guy D30 that says, Every year I like to roll a bunch of dice and donate the sum as an RNG donation. The Breath of the Wild speedrun is a favorite of mine, so it's the perfect time to do it. Thanks for everything you do, GDQ. We also have a $50 donation from Hydrated Ganon that just says, Stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time for one more? Yeah. Yes. We have a $300 donation from Maggie May that says, first time donating. The Legend of Zelda franchise has always been my favorite. Hey, listen. All right, so coming up here in a second, uh, we're going to have another amazing use of the stasis rune, I believe. Yes, I have three arrows so I can pull this trick off. Basically, I'm going to attempt to walk on this block. This one can be pretty tough. I can't believe this trick. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Looks good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go, Song. This Beautiful. This is so boring without the stretch. Oh, right. It's so nice yeah. to have it, dude. Interesting little factoid about that strat. We used to not be able to do that because Magnesis was one of the first shrine we did on Plateau back before we discovered shield clipping. But since we're able to get Stasis as the first uh, rune of the run, we can use Stasis in shrines like Magnesis. So that strat's actually possible now. No. Right. 
Pop, talk to me about Bombs Split and why it can be quite frustrating. Ooh. So this one uh, is kind of a little bit different than the rest of them. We're actually going to be having the Bacoblins notice us and their movement can be a little wacky depending on... Uh, there's a lot of adaptability essentially that you have, so uh, hopefully they're nice. Um, we're going to be doing another box walk here. Just casually, you know, just flying through the stage basically. <laughs> Oh, oh, not too bad. Oh. Luckily, we've got some water below there. Yeah. The developers were thinking about us. Again, we're hoping that these Bacoblins will be pretty nice. They do. Tr they will try to attack, uh, to attack Song. We've got to watch out for flying barrels as well. It's a good first movement. Nice, walks up quickly. Dodge that and rock. And... Oh, nice. Whoa. Oh, no, there we Whoa. Go. Oh, this is going to be a little wild. I think you can do it. Oh! That was intense. Wow! Oh, yeah. Yeah, this angle is a little bit uncommon. Probably something that he's uh, not too comfortable with. Usually, we would try to skip that little guardian cutscene right there. That's a very tiny time loss. Uh, you can wake him up later on by throwing a bomb at him or shooting him with an arrow, but that's totally fine. Instead, he got this amazingly fast angle, so not too much to complain. Almost. This one can be a little bit tricky. Oh, for sure. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Very nice. This is the, the final shrine clip of the run. Mm -hmm. Number four. We also have a time for a few donations as well, while the rune cutscene goes. Got it. We have a $500 donation from Abrad45. That says, gotta donate during my all-time favorite game. Good luck during the run, Wolhike Song. <laughs> Thank you. We also have a $500 donation from Anonymous. That says, thanks to everyone behind the scenes who worked tirelessly this week to keep the event running smoothly. I love watching GDQ events every year and always look forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Anonymous. So uh, this shrine is a little bit different than the rest of them. He's going to be trying to go pretty fast here towards the beginning. Um, it's actually cycle-based, so he's going to be going for a pretty early cycle. Uh, let's see if he gets it. Yeah, this is all based around the movement he basically performs here at the start. You can actually drop these bombs behind you if you jump. Link will just drop them. And this looks like a possibility to catch that early cycle. Shield very jump nice. Very, nice. very nice. That's very difficult. Yeah. Only top, top runners usually can get make that. That's a very tough cycle to make. Also being able to basically blow up all of these blocks with one bomb. A little, little bit of a puzzle skip. I think the game intends you to use two, but that worked out just fine. All right, so that is the last shrine of the Great Plateau, and now we're just going to head out and get the paraglider. Uh, but before that, we have something else that we have to address. Oh, did they mention that we get orbs at the end of the shrines? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you guys, you guys or orbs. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Missing four orbs? That's incredible. <laughs> but yeah, um, before we get into Beetle Angie, I think the run is going to pick up quite heavily after this. I think this text cutscene might be the last real chance for donations, honestly. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get pretty, pretty um, intense. So maybe? No? A lot of pressure there. <laughs> so we have a $200 donation from Sneaky the Walrus that says, Legend of Zelda is my favorite series of all time, and Doctors Without Borders is an amazing organization. Let's go, everyone. P.S. Kill the animals. <laughs> we also have a $170 donation from Gudiger. Hey, Song. Greetings from San Alfonso del Mar. Donating during my favorite game with my favorite runner who still attempts box walk. Hype? All right. Hype. So then, uh, beetle time. What, 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 what is it about this beetle? All right, so basically for the boss rush that we're going to do here in a little bit at Harrow Castle, we need to get an attack up potion. And one of the first ingredients that we're going to get for that is this beetle up here. And it's RNG where it is. It's, um, and basically we have to hope there's a good beetle here. So it's going to be on one of these trees. Yeah, this white here would be the optimal one. Let's see if we can find it quickly. This there is, it is. Fine. This yeah, is good. Yeah. This is not too bad. Very nice. And for those of you who have seen the animated Breath of the Wild speedrun, this is, this is you my probably know what's scene. happening there. This is my favorite scene. Easily. It's my favorite scene. Too. Easily. <laughs> Grabbing onto the tree. Very nice. And here we go. Nice. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh, oh, oh God. nice save. That was, save. Blood, that was God. Dude. Nice save. <laughs> The Clutch Master. 
All right, so one thing to keep in mind here is that Bokoblin that was on the screen right there will actually need him, and he's probably going to be part of the most detrimental and maybe even hardest trick in the run. Sometimes if you land like that, he can be, his, his position can be slightly affected, mm -hmm. so Song might need to reload after this cutscene, but we'll see. He's a very important Bokoblin. He is. Yes. All right, so that is the Great Plateau. Uh, Song at this point is going to get the paraglider. And this is going to allow us to obviously glide around, but combine that with a bullet time bounce like we did before, we're going to be able to do some absolutely crazy things. I think we were talking about this early. I think this specific BTB saved like two minutes yes. or yeah. something. But it is arguably the hardest trick in the run. It's extremely timing dependent, mm -hmm. and we really want to give Song a chance here to focus. Feast your eyes. <laughs> Almost. Slightly too late. Slightly too late. I think we are literally talking about a tiny frame window where you are able to actually uh, activate the bullet time motor, pull the bow there, which is mainly due to our plans with this BTB. Obviously, right now, Link only has one full stamina bar, and our plan is to go very, very far. And that's why we can only really um, use as little stamina as possible. That looks good. Yes. Nice. Let's Here we go. go. Oh, yeah. There we go. Atta boy. Uh, so it's very important that he pulled it as late as he could in order to still get the BTB, just because he does need all of this stamina to get all the way to Castle. So yeah, he is going to fly all the way to Hyrule Castle. We're not going to touch Hyrule Field once. Yep, I think the developers at some point mentioned that once you finish the tutorial, you could straight go to Ganon. He takes that quite literally. Yes. <laughs> so, Lim, actually, could we talk about what's coming up as far as RNG? Yeah, this is actually the biggest difference between the no amiibo and amiibo, amiibo category. We were talking about that uh, attack up potion. One ingredient of that will be a banana. Oh, wait, actually, let's see if he's okay. able to land here. Oh. <laughs> but if there's any time for, uh, if there's any time for RNG, and I think we do have the original blessed RNG here, it's literally right now. Song needs to get a banana from this crate. This Where's, our be, uh, Where's our boy Bless? Where's our boy Bless? Right. Wait until the cutscene. Oh, the yeah, cutscene. there's a cutscene. Okay, we, should, we should pray anyway. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yep. Okay. Give us the banana. So now I'm going to save just in case something goes wrong. We so really need that banana, by the way. It's yeah, a very yeah. important banana. I can't go on without the banana, so we're going to save just in case. No banana. Oh. 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 That's right. <laughs> Banana, 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 banana. These are pretty Banana, banana, banana. Come on, second try. Come on. Yeah! So that's the hardest trick in the game, actually. Yeah, that banana's about a 50 to 60% chance every try, so uh, not too bad getting a second try. Okay, so entering castle, we already see him use the frost printing mechanic that Zand was talking about earlier, because from here on out, and I remember watching this for the first time, I thought the moblins in here, they just don't work, because everything Song does here is basically manipulating these moblins into them ignoring Link. So he's going to collect a few more ingredients here. He's going to complete that attack potion, and a couple more weapons as well. But like Lim was saying, there's a lot of neat lore strats here to make it so these moblins behave. The intent to basically, the reason we don't go immediately up to Calamity Ganon to beat him is because we obviously want to stack up. Hyrule Castle basically holds some, if not the most powerful weapons in the game. And by going this little route here through the castle, we pick up lots of arrows, weapons, and obviously cook our attack up potion. So this is a very neat little lore he's here he's going to do to actually use the cooking pot with these enemies nearby. Um, he's going to distract him with a bomb, and it'll actually make him able <laughs> to cook at the fire pot. Oh! Nice. He didn't nice. see it coming. <laughs> All right. 
Got it. Okay. That can be very stressful right there sometimes. Um, the cooking pot m might not work if the enemies are noticing you. Yep. But right now making our way to another very strong weapon, the Royal Guard Sword here hidden under this rock wall, or behind this rock wall. So he's basically once again using this bomb drop trick. And Song is the only runner you will see who will not have an EX chest there. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> right here is actually, uh, he's whistling, so this moment is literally blind, because all he cares about is about the whistling he heard earlier, not Link actually killing him, but yeah. Look at that menuing. Song is too good at this game. Yeah, it's clean. So in total, there's seven weapons that he's looking to grab. He's already grabbed six of them, so just making sure we get some good arrows here, and that looks pretty good, actually. Decent enough, I want to say. Uh, our uh, basically bows and arrows are broken in this game, and that's going to be our main uh, basically damage source to deal with calamity, Ganon. So this is Alphys right here. He has bomb arrows, so as long as he's going to headshot him just yeah. to make it so he doesn't bother us. Bomb arrows are awful on NPCs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually already a good point because that will be interesting later for the boss fights. Link usually when he's at full HP has something called one-shot protection. He won't necessarily be one-shot by most attacks, but there's some exceptions to that, that bomb arrow being one of them that would just straight up kill him. Also note about one-shot protection, it is disabled in master mode. Yeah. Ah, actually didn't know that. And we've grabbed all of our weapons here, going ahead and uh, using our stasis rune to go ahead and fly all the way back up to Sanctum. Pretty precise trick here. Very good. Nice. Very nice. Let's go. Okay, but uh, yeah, if you thought this game was tricky so far, this is where it gets really scary. Since we didn't beat any Divine Beasts, all four Blights will be here, and Calamity Ganon will be at full HP. If Song dies during any point during this boss rush, he starts all the way at the start of the boss rush. So from now on, it's going to be gamer time. <laughs> so, really, the goal of all of these blights here is that he's going to be trying to effectively finish them off before they void and trying to have them not attack him. Um, all of these attack hits that he's doing are very precise. Um, trying to get some double hits, which if you're looking away from an object you're hitting, you actually can sometimes get two hits instead of one. That was a pretty good first phase and may not get a void out here. Nice. 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 That's fast. Three headshots here will take him down and from here on out it's just basically poking him a little bit with the spear and then finishing him off with a charge attack. Pokey pokey. Very There's good one of four. Yeah, very good. I think Water Blight, in my opinion, is the most skill-based Blight because you actually need to aim very well. Headshots are crucial. Looks good, and we're looking for triple hits. That should be enough. Very good double hits between the arm and the body there. Nice. Very, very nice. nice. Yeah. That was very fast. So what's going to happen here, actually, is that um, usually it takes two headshots to bring Water Blight down, but on this first one, it's only going to take one because of the way that he finished off that Blight there in that first cycle. Yep. Now oh, this is where the aim comes in. Gotta hit the eye. I think Mifa uh, tells you that a couple of times when you get there. So there it is. Water Blight does have set positions here, so he's shooting him from that direction to make sure he lands on the floor and not up on the stairs so he can actually get hits on him. And once he respawns again, he's gonna land over here, which Song is gonna just go over and take him out. And then our trusty spinning mechanic to go ahead and finish it off. Spin to win. All right, halfway to Calamity. Speaking of spin to win, uh, that's basically our spread here for Fire Blight. And once again... He doesn't like spins. <laughs> very good first phase. We did want that sword there to break at the very end. It does do a little bit more damage than um, some of the other ways, so... Uh, hopefully he can get a one cycle here at Fireblight Phase 2, which will, um, again, help some time with voiding out. This is one of the most difficult one cycles to get in the Blights. Definitely. Easy. This will also be actually the first time we use a rune in this fight. Casually, I think the game intends to use these runes more effectively, but this is the only one we really need. Two, three. All right, we'll see if he gets the one cycle. Looks... Looks good. Looks Double good. Hits. That's nice. very good. Very nice. 
Excellent place helped. so far. This guy is scary. In my casual playthrough, I probably died like 10 times here. So, I couldn't even figure out how to kill him in my casual playthrough. Which makes it incredibly satisfying to do this to him. Just yeah. like that, he's halfway. The interesting thing about Blights is that speedrun strats are, are actually really nice because you're always one cycling Blights. Uh, you basically don't give them a chance to attack. Second phase. Uh, once again, usually the game intends you to use the Magnesis rune here to lift up these metal poles that he's dropping. But by throwing your boomerang against the shield and then headshotting him, you also make him fall. And this is where we are about to finish off lights. Very nice on the shield break. And he's getting absolutely obliterated. Very good. Very nice. So here's where the fun begins. Whew. All right. Calamity Ganon. Since we didn't do any Divine Beasts in this playthrough, he is at full health. So this is going to be a very difficult fight for Song, but he's starting off here with the Flurry Rush. And this parry already is amazingly hard to get. Like, it was a clutch that he got this. The problem here with Calamity again is if he was to take a death, he would start at the very beginning of Blights. The Song is going to go in focus mode, and he's going to finish him off. Once again, our main strategy will be using arrows and specifically headshots to deplete his health as much as fast as possible. Headshots are definitely a huge help here. They do 1.5 times damage, so obviously that's going to seriously cut down the amount of arrows you need in order to defeat Calamity. He's looking really good. Very, very good headshot so far. Another flurry rush. Let's go! So we don't really like Calamity on the wall, but since we do want to save some bomb arrows to get him off pretty fast, Looking pretty good so far here, phase one. Yeah, Calamity on the wall has some extra attacks, so you really want to get him off of there as fast as possible. But as soon as that health bar is about to hit the middle of that L of uh, Ganon's name, you should be done with that first phase. Nice. Very good. There. That was phase amazing. One. All right, so the beginning of second phase is one of the main parts of RNG during this run. So let's see if we get the laser first try. All right, so we got an attack. I... We're looking for a laser so Song can parry it and get him stunned. Very oh, good. Oh. This is clutch. Oh, this man. is so good. So the technique Song is going to be doing here is called a stun lock. Um, essentially what's going to be happening is that he's just going to keep going in this action of getting up and then getting hit as he's going up to where he just keeps getting stunned down. Yeah, whenever you time that slam it just after he plunges the spear into the bottom, uh, you will be able to get that stun lock making phase two relatively easy, but still very timing precise. Yeah, this trick isn't to be underestimated, but it is a very efficient way for taking him out in phase two. We're and one or two, or two more. Close. I think this might be it. That's it. Very good. Good job, Song. Amazing. That was really good. So now we're moving on to Beast Ganon. A lot of people kind of revere this as the target practice for the next run. But there's actually a pretty, you know, a pretty decent movement pattern you have to do here in order to actually manipulate him to save the, the a proper amount of time. So um, Song is going to walk a very specific places with his horse to make it so uh, the beast doesn't turn specific directions and he's able to get the shots as soon as possible. Even though it's unlikely for Song to die, one thing to point out is if you do somehow die here, because the laser does do a lot of damage, you'll at least spawn at the beginning of Dark Beast, not at the beginning of Blights. But this is where the fight is going to start, and Zelda's going to start to uncover his weak points, and Song is going to try to hit them as fast as possible. Nice. Phase one, very nice. Yeah. So I guess while we're here at the at Dark Beast Ganon, this would be a good time to talk about just if anybody is interested in Breath of the Wild speedrunning in general, um, there's an amazing community surrounding this game. Uh, you can find more information on the speedrun.com page. Uh, there's a link to the Discord there. Um, this game, like, like we were saying earlier, this game has come an absolutely long way mm -hmm. in 2018. And even this year in 2019, we've had many huge discoveries. So Breath of the Wild, what once was a pretty vanilla run, is actually turning out to be pretty broken and have some really neat exploits in it. Yeah. Great hits again. Very nice. Good aim. Yeah. This kid is good, dude. Yeah. 
But yeah, as we are about to finish the run here shortly once again, also want to make sure that you guys, uh, if you are interested in this, I encourage you to give it a shot. This game looks scary. I'm honestly going to be like, I'm on honest. This looks super scary. But if you if you stick with it, um, it's probably one of the most uh, fulfilling games to run. It really feels good Definitely. to destroy these enemies. I mean, he's been doing it with three hearts. It's super fun. And something else is this game as well. This is the first open world Zelda, but that is very, that is very, very, very present in speedruns. Mm -hmm. um, the tricks that we have are very organic. Uh, they each yep. have their own setup. Things you have to learn them as a skill, and it's a very interesting game for that reason. And it really shows off this game's open world um, aspect in you know a speedrunning scene. And we are about to come up on time here. A song hits the eye of Dark Beast. Uh, and time. time. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is honestly a really stressful run. I had to focus so hard. Um, shout outs to the amazing Breath of the Wild community. Shout out to my friends and family who are probably watching. Shout out to my couch. Thank you guys so much. I could have done this run without you. Really, thank you so much. And yeah, thank you everyone, really. Thank you <laughs> to the crowd. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, that's Breath of the Wild any percent. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Can we get another round of applause for that amazing Breath of the Wild run? We have a donation in from Nathan35 that pretty much sums up how I feel about this run. He put in $600 to say, my first run of Breath of the Wild took slightly longer than this. Also during that run, we had a $6,000 donation from Anonymous that just said, well, excuse me, princess. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for that amazing donation. <laughs> and I'm very briefly going to hop this over to a Twitch ad, and we will be right back. All done. I don't know if I did that too early. Once again, this is Summer Games Done Quick 2019. Thank you so much for joining us. We just finished up an amazing Breath of the Wild run, and up next is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 100%, so you'll want to stick around for that. Uh, but before that, we're going to have an interview, and before that, we've got a couple more donations that came in during the last run. We had a $1,000 donation from Terrine that says, this last week has flown by like Link riding a shield. I'm not ready for SGDQ to end. This donation goes to adding Ocarina of Time to the marathon. Thank you so much for that donation. We have a $200 donation from Crash Algorithm that says, thank you so much to GGQ staff runners and fellow donators. Banana! Banana. 
We have a $100 donation from Steegy. Here's to the absurdity of a half-naked link whistling through a corrupted Hyrule castle after surfing a shield, a tree, and a box a couple of kilometers in one of the best games ever made. And just wanted to give a really quick shout out to the Yeti, GDQ's official shirt sponsor. They've been providing tees and other merch for nearly eight years, and they've donated over $1 million towards GDQ's partnered charities. So you can visit www.theyeti.com to check out the SGDQ collection. And it looks amazing this year. They've got a bunch of incredible shirts, so you definitely want to check that out. We have a $200 donation from Cody Last. Great job, guys, and thanks for everything you do. Gotta go fast. We had a $40 donation from Punny Game Names. If this game featured Link helping asthmatic youths, would it be called Breath of the Child? Okay, and now I'm going to throw it over to an interview with Spike for The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, talking about Taz. And what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. I am Spike the Cheetah, and I have taken Sense Roll, uh, taking his soul right here with these, uh, with these gloves right now, these Michael Jackson gloves. We want to present to you guys just a couple of awesome prizes. We still got uh, kind of up for uh, throwing in your donations down to get into the drawing for them. We first have this amazing Dark Souls Calamite Fabric Tapestry. Let me make sure I'm opening it the right way. Yeah, it's one of them. Yes. Uh, one of the awesome optional bosses of the DLC here, Calamite from Dark Souls. Absolutely gorgeous stuff here. For a minimum of donation of $40, you'll be entered into the drawing for this. This will go all the way through the Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend run. Uh, I'll be in the morning. you got about roughly seven-ish hours right now to get into that. Again, that is a minimum $40 donation. We also, let me just get this wrapped up real quick, be a little easy about it. I don't, <laughs> I do one price segment. I don't want to be the reason why this uh, isn't worth as much. But we've got right here also this absolutely gorgeous, the Majora's Mask Moonrise. I'm about to say, we got people in here hyped for Majin Phil's 100% run of Majora's Mask coming up after this. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful artwork right here. For a minimum of $35, also through the Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend run. So you got about seven hours once again to get into the drawing for this. $35. Everything goes to Doctors Without Borders. Everything for a great cause. And yeah, look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous. I might steal this. I'm just kidding. I'll let you have it. Um, and also a reminder, guys, once again, for a minimum of $200 cumulative over the course of the entire marathon, everything you've built up until now and anything you want to get in for the rest of the marathon, you can still get into the drawing for what we got here. The Hylian Shield and the Master Sword off screen. Beautiful replicas. And some of the, <laughs> you're not going to find a lot of these in the world. So make sure you get in donations for that. And one more, the Alienware Aurora R8 PC. Amazing PC build we got for you guys. That is a 100 $150 cumulative donation total that actually started at the beginning of the Mega Man block in the afternoon uh, this past afternoon all the way through the end of the marathon. So even more cumulative, amazing prizes that you can get into drawings for. So once again, head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash tracker. You can see all the good stuff you can still donate for, including the $250,000 we need to get Chrono Trigger to be 100% at the end of the marathon and the $300,000 we need for Ocarina of Time any percent to be run by one of the any percent elite runners here Torge. You guys don't want to miss any of that awesome action. Make this marathon last as long as possible, everyone.
So with that, let's also get into the interview, or I guess the uh, task bot segment we got going on. I am joined now by the one, the only, the ever talented, ever more intelligent than me, Dwango AC. How you doing, man? I'm not so sure about that last one. You're pretty smart there, my friend. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Well, let me... Uh, <laughs> that, uh, my brains is not the reason why they hired me. Well, then it was I'll, my look. I'll help you educate yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me. Like, maybe a little smarter about Majora's Mask. What are we about to see here? What you're about to see is a little bit of demonstration of how a tool-assisted speedrun is kind of made in one sense, because I'm going to be showing you a little bit of the controls. In this case, I've mapped them to a an 8-bit dough pad just to kind of demonstrate... But we're also going to break down one of the glitches a little bit. It's going to be, it's a two-frame weird shot. And yeah. we're going to compare that against a one-frame weird shot, because that matters. And they're a frame apart, and I'm going to show you the differences and what can happen if you mess it up. So a lot of things that a real-time runner does, especially in a game like this, can be very frame-specific, where you have to hit a narrow window. Now, in, in fairness... The N64 is not exactly known for the highest frame rate. Didn't have a ton of 60 FPS games, no. but still we're talking here, you know, for the 3D Zelda's a lot of times dealing with that 20 frames per second. So a frame perfect trick, still only about a 20th of a second you're getting to work with. And that's not exactly a lot when you're moving at full speed. I'm going to demonstrate this at slow motion with frame advance using the Dolphin emulator. Uh, really quick setup information. This laptop here is a System76 laptop running Linux natively. This is the Dolphin emulator running on it, and I just have a controller that I've mapped buttons to. So we can get that up on screen. I'll show you the emulator here. This is running Majora's Mask, and I have this handy little button that I've mapped right here. Uh, it's right here. I can press this shoulder button and advance one frame at a time. So I can make the game run even slower than it normally does. Uh, now, at any time, I can press this button over here that I've mapped to the load state button, which means I can back up at any point to an earlier state, and we'll be using that a few times. So I'm going to show you in real time what this glitch looks like. I'm going to try to annotate. He's going to set a bomb, pull out his, his she, uh, sword. I'm sorry. Pour out a, nah, I couldn't do it. See, it went too fast. <laughs> uh, how about we try that again? Uh, so I'm going to load that state again. Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's load that again. So he's going to pull out a bomb get his shield, get the bow out at the same time, hold left and down at the same time as the bomb releases, and it shoves him through the wall. So we're actually on the other side of the wall right now. One more time just for, one more time with feeling. So we see this wall right in front of Link. It's going to go right through. We just clipped him right there. So you can see those plants there. Now what, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do next is kind of break that down just a little bit more. There's actually a ton to unpack here. The bomb's set here. I'm, I'm pressing this frame advance button so you can kind of see what's going on. It's really tiny, but if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you can actually see on the screen what player one is pressing. So right about here, okay, we've now pressed Y and L, and we're holding left and, da left and down on the, on the analog stick. Right here, you see the bombs start to explode. Right there, it's, it's a little bit more exploded. And right here, you can see he started, he released Y and released all of the buttons. When I say he, I specifically mean, oh, I can't remember his name. Oh, Majin Phil we got coming up right here. Wait, Majin Phil, but it was another one of his, one of, another member of his community helped me out, and I can't remember his gamer name. I really apologize for that. Uh, helped me make this replay file. Oh, uh, so we, well, shout outs to that person, wherever yes, you are. Uh, Aaron, I think. I am so sorry for him forgetting his name. <laughs> um, so he helped me make this. One of the things that he did here when he did this two-frame Wrong, sh uh, I, I just, just said it wrong. A uh, weird shot, weird I shot. believe. Wrong yeah, shot. yeah. Wrong shot is. <laughs> they were starting to run out of names in the N64 Zelda community. They were like, uh, <laughs> weird shot, sure. <laughs> yes, sure. And it stuck. It stuck. So this one demonstrates going through the wall. But what I'm going to do is a little bit funky. So I'm going to load a state here right before, right here. This, this state is odd because it's at a place where the game renders the frame purple. If I go forward a little bit farther, you see our friend where the bomb has just exploded. If we move forward, we go through the wall like you've seen me do a few times now. So from this point, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go back to that point, but I'm going to set the game in a read-write mode. This means it's now recording what button presses I'm making here. So when I load this state, it says switch to recording. So I loaded that save state I just made. Switch to recording mode. Now when I frame advance, it's no longer pressing all of those buttons at the same time. We'll still see that purple effect, but we're not holding the buttons down anymore. Instead of a two-frame weird shot, we get a one-frame weird shot. If I advance forward, you'll see that instead of going through that wall, which you can see over there, mm -hmm. we're just going to keep uh -oh. going down the elevator. <laughs> 
all the way down. And at this point, I can actually move around. You can, I can show you. The, there's the platform we were on earlier. There's the bushes. That's where we wanted yeah. to be. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. It yeah. depends. Um, so I'm going to hey, say, uh, don't... Don't don't uh, load that. Let's switch to playback. All right. So this puts us all the way back here. So now if I go back here, we can see that see that compared to the two shot again. So this is where where we where they want to go. They want to go through the wall here. If you mess up by one frame, you end up in the basement or in the in the lake or the water. Whatever you want to call it. It might not be what you actually wanted to do. That might really mess up your route. There's going to be a lot of those types of tricks in the run you're about to see, and this is a good way to find out what the game mechanics are. And it also demonstrates exactly the amount of skill that some of these runners have to pull off repeatedly over the course of a what hour run? Five hours? Five hours of intense gameplay we got going on here with this Majora's Mask 100% run. I've asked a lot of people in the 3D Zelda community over the years, and I've had a lot of people tell me they think Majora's Mask is actually the hardest 3D Zelda speed run. There's so much stuff like that. You're one frame off, and all of a sudden, your, com your route is completely messed up, like you're saying. You're ending up in a basement instead of being able to get to that mini ferry right there. So. Awesome demonstration right there, Duango. I'm looking forward to this amazing run by Majin Phil. Hopefully he can keep the mistakes on a minimum because this game is absolutely brutal. Again, he's going to be doing the 100% run. Let's get snug, guys. Let's also get hype. Legends of Majora's Mask by Majin Phil. 100% coming your way right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people inside, outside, in between, all around, and even non-people. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. I am Patty, and I am here to read your donations during Majin Phil's run. Coming up soon here, Majin Phil's going to be getting 100% of the items in Majora's Mask as quickly as possible. So please feel free to get your donations in. I look forward to reading them. Thank you very much. Zimzol donates $50 and says, Zelda is my favorite game series. Same. Can't believe it's so broken. Can't wait to see Majora's Mask get broken just as much as that Breath of the Wild run. Wow. <laughs> you thought Breath of the Wild was broken. Just you wait. We got a string of donations here. Anonymous donates $100 and no comment. Anonymous donates $50 with no comment. Anonymous donates $250 and no comment. Anonymous donates $50 with no comment. Anonymous donates $50 with no comment. Anonymous donates $100 with no comment. Anonymous donates $50 with no comment. Anonymous donates $50 with no comment. Anonymous donates $150 with no comment. Thank you very much, Anonymous. <laughs> 